out there who has a herniated disc. As you can see from the title of this video, this is going to be a sequence and a class, especially for you if you have a slipped disc. I've done one other class and one other video which educates people exactly what a herniated disc is, and I've linked both of those in the description box below. The first class that I taught was a little bit easier. It had, you know, very simple movements, and because I had, honestly, an overwhelming response of people writing to me going, thank you so much, I was in a lot of pain, and I did your class, and I'm feeling so much better that I really wanted to make another video for you but I also wanted to make it a little bit harder just so that you feel that you're progressing in your practice and honestly I can't thank you enough for all those messages because when I read them I felt so touched and it has inspired this class so I'm really excited about teaching it to you if you have got a very severe herniated disc maybe go back to the one that I've shot for you before if you're feeling like actually you're managing your symptoms but you want to get a bit stronger in your body then this is the class for you so when you're ready get your yoga mat on and let's get grooving. <laughs> you're gonna practice in standing first. Um, you're gonna come to the top of your yoga mat, separate your feet maybe a little bit. Remember for the duration of all the poses and the whole sequence, I need you guys to always keep your body in a backbend like position. We call it extension. And also, as you do this, really fire up the, muddle, the muscles of your back body, like your bum muscles and your back muscles. And this is just going to help to support the disc and help push the fluid back in so that it's off that nerve giving you pain. So, as you stand up tall right now, instead of having any kind of flexion in your body or coming forward through the shoulders, I want you to lift up and away from your hips. And I want you to just slightly lean back. And as you do that, I want you to feel how your bum muscles just naturally start to engage that little bit. Now, as you get that engagement through your back body, I want you to shift into your right leg and keep this feeling of arching through your upper spine and send your left leg behind you so it's off the floor very slightly by maybe an inch. And again, I want you to feel the muscles of your bum getting really strong to help A, your balance and B, your disc. Now you're gonna put a tiny, tiny bend in your right knee, but as you do that, squeeze your bum on the right leg and start to lift the left leg, bringing your chest forward a bit, but still coming into extension. This is warrior three, looks like a T. You're gonna hold this for five, four, three, pull your belly button in, two, and one. Now bend your right knee a bit more, and here you need to be particularly careful that you keep your back in a back bend. Place your left foot behind you. That transition is quite hard, so take your time. If you feel like your, your balance is a bit off, grab a chair and hold on to it. So we're in a lunge. Your right leg is bent, your left leg is straight. I want you to inhale and sweep your arms above your head. Bend your right knee a bit more. Exhale, sink into that lunge and really power up your back leg and especially your left butt cheek. <laughs> Now, just to get a bit more fire in your leg muscles, which you're probably deconditioning if you're not doing a lot of exercise because of your pain, we're going to do a few lunges here. So I want you to bend your back knee, and often people start moving into flexion here. You're going to keep extending, and you're going to lift up and straighten both of the legs, which makes balance tricky, so just take care. Inhale on the way down, squeeze them butt cheeks, <laughs> and then stretch up. And again, take it down. And lift, down, lift, and we're going to do one more, take it down, and lift. Go back into the lunge where you just have the right leg bent, back leg is super long and straight, and twist. Now twists for some people with herniated discs feel amazing, one direction could be worse, the other direction could be completely fine, so just gauge it, you don't want to go into pain. Twist as much as you can. Look all the way towards your back hand. Good. I don't know about you, but I can already feel my butt cheek on the right leg burning. <laughs> so I know we're doing some good here, but possibly because I've just had Christmas and I've not actually been getting off the couch much. Ooh, ooh, chat. <laughs> okay, now bring it all the way back up into the center. Bend your right knee again, keep the back leg straight. Flatten the back foot so it's a bit more comfortable now. You're not on the ball of the foot anymore. Warrior two, open your arms out. So it looks like you're in a narrow passage and your body's not kind of poking out in any weird ways. Bend your right knee again a little bit more because we get lazy with that. Flip your right palm, take a huge breath in, and then as you breathe out, you're going to reverse the warrior. Now, we are doing a back bend, which is great for someone with a herniated disc, but it's also in a twist, so please be careful. 
Engage your bum muscles, lengthen your ribs away from your pelvis and just feel like you're moving very slowly into your extension so you know you're going where your body wants to be. My right leg is absolutely killing, I hope yours is too. Let's straighten out the right leg and bring the right hand all the way down. Hands are going to go on your hips. You're going to roll hips and shoulders back to the front and you're on the ball of the back foot. And here you again need to take a lot of care with your back. In fact, why don't you do this? Put your hands on your back and make sure you keep that back bend feeling. Bend your back knee until your back knee connects to the ground. Front leg is going to go back until you're on both of your knees. And then we'll do a little camel, which is a nice back bend. Keep your toes curled under so your heels are higher. Put your hands on your hips and squeeze your legs towards each other as if they're squeezing something. Engage your bum, you can poke it if you want to feel the muscle activation. Lengthen your ribs away from your hips and do a big back bend. Bring it all the way back up and we'll rep this. So we're gonna do a few. Inhale. Exhale, come back up. Inhale, go back. Exhale, come back up. And just one more. Inhale, go back. Exhale, come back up. If this feels like it's quite intense, you can't go back very far, stick with doing one of those, but you're going to hold it, which is really hard, because you're going to have your hands on your hips. Those of you who want to take it further, actually it could be a bit easier, because you've got your hands resting on your heels for your camel. Squeeze your bum again, lift into your chest and feel your back bend. Good, take one more breath here, big inhale into your chest. And then you're gonna lift up from your core but you're gonna keep extension in your spine which is actually really hard. You guys have a lot, this is hard. A lot of people think a class like this is easier but actually maintaining the right body position the whole time is very taxing. We want to come onto our all fours and what tends to happen is we break from the hips and then the spine rounds. So to avoid that happening, because this is really the worst thing for someone with a herniated disc, put your hands on your hips and stick your bum out as if you're trying to sit your bum on a little chair. And once you feel you've got this arch in your back but your chest is closer to the ground, place your hands down and point your toes. Again, imagine you've got something between your legs and you're squeezing it just to get your inner thighs active. Extend your right leg backwards and reach the left arm forwards. And hold this long straight line from foot to hand. Now to get your muscles really strong, visualize the muscles all through the leg and your core and your shoulder being super strong. Hold it there and then slow motion. Connect the hand and the knee to the ground at the exact same time takes a little bit more mindfulness. Take care to keep your bum lifted so that you're arching your lower back. And extend to the other side. Beautiful, bring both your hand and your knee down to the ground. So I promise that this is gonna be a class that's a bit harder. So what we're going to do now is you're gonna curl your toes under, and of course this is optional, you don't have to do it, but let's lift into a plank position. And what I want you to do is instead of tucking your tailbone, I actually wanna stick your bum out so it looks like a really bad plank, but just keep your bum arched. But I want you to still push the shoulders around the front so you've got a very strong position in your scapula, your shoulder blades. Hold it there, three more, two more, and one. Place your knees down slowly. We're gonna make this harder in a second, but just so that you have a progression. You're going to bend your arms, and you're going to hover your chest just above the floor, and you're gonna push the floor away. Now, if you're pushing back here, that's not right. Okay, you got forwards. <laughs> so bring your chest, I always am a bit crude, and I say your nipples have to be in line with your thumbs. Bend your arms and straighten. You're gonna do two more, bend and push, and then last one. Now I know that watching this video are some very active people, you guys are very strong, and even though you have got a herniated disc, actually this is way too easy. So yes, we will also do it with knees off the floor. If that's too hard, keep your knees on the floor before we're gonna do four more. So you're gonna lift up, and you're gonna stick your bum out, you're gonna bend your arms. As you go up, when you get here, round your upper back, but not your lower back. 
bend your arms and push. And then you do two more. This is hard after Christmas. <laughs> bend and push. And you're gonna do one more. Down and push. Okay, awesome. Now bring your knees to the ground. We're not done yet. We've got one more crazy hard thing to do. We just did something called Superman, where we like extended our legs and our arms. You can also do super plank, which is really tough because you're going to have your knees off the floor and you're going to lift one leg, optional to lift the arm as well. Remember, you need to keep your butt up, people, okay? I don't want any like tucking of the tailbone happening. So curl your toes, lift your knees up, round your upper back, squeeze your bum on the right butt cheek as you lift your right leg up. Optional, lift your left arm for five, four, three, two, and down. And then you're going to lift the left leg and the right arm and you're going to count with me five, four, three, two, one. Bring your knees to the ground, bring your whole body to the ground. Oh my goodness, my arms. <laughs> okay, elbows underneath your shoulders, like a sphinx. When you look at your elbows, uh, I should say when you look at your forearms, they should be two parallel lines. There are no elbows going wider or hands coming in. Everything is completely two straight lines. And you should feel very propped up by this. Um, if your elbows are too far back, your chest will be really low. So you've got to slide your elbows forward. Now, it's really good to be in extension if you have a herniated disc. As I explained, you're pushing fluid away from that painful nerve. The only thing is, you also want to learn how to support your body. Your whole core, if it's super strong, it's going to make managing your symptoms a lot easier. So, having said that, here we go. Curl your toes under, and I need you to squeeze your bum, but keep your arch in your lower back. Normally when you squeeze your bum, a tucking happens. Obviously, you guys cannot do that. So keep your bum arched, elbows are strong on the ground. Now, as you push into your arms and your feet, your hips are gonna lift off the ground, and then you're going to bring your hips back down to the ground. You can't do crunches, because of the nature of a crunch is a flexion movement, which is bad for your herniated disc. So this is the best thing I could think of for you guys. We're gonna do quite a few more, so get ready. Nine more, let's go. Lift and down. Lift and down. Seven, keep your back, lower back arched. Down, if you get pain at any time, five, stop. Down, and by tired, I don't mean tired, I mean pain, okay? <laughs> Down, up, sorry. Down, four more to go. Three more. Two more, still squeeze your bum even though you're arching through your back. Two more. And last one. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Bend your knees, lift your feet up. Reach around and grab hold of your ankles. And uh, I mean, this can be quite tricky, reaching this far back. If you need to grab some straps and loop them around your feet, that's fine. We're going to roll onto our right-hand side. So, you need to give like a little bit of momentum and gunk. Once you arrive, push your feet into your hands and look up to the ceiling. And I'm not doing this for any other reason other than the floor is massaging my lower shoulder, which feels really, really nice. And also you're in a back bend, which is good for you. <laughs> and then we're going to take a big roll to the tummies to the middle, and you're gonna go the other way. Roll back into the center. Oh, so good. Hands underneath your shoulders, extend through your feet. Do a little mini back bend again. Keep your back arched as you bend your knees and push your bum up. Keep your back arched as you bring your fingertips closer to your knees. Put your hands on your hips and lift up. Lift your right leg first, left leg second, and then you're standing. Okay, we're gonna do the whole sequence now on the other side. So your feet are about hip distance apart and your hands are on your hips. And I just want you to feel as if all the muscles of the body are very strong. It's not like stiff, it's just active. Your body weight's gonna shift to the left foot Start to move your chest forward and extend back through your right leg. Again, mental check muscles, really activate. Chest keeps lifting 
uh, I should say arching as it moves down to the ground and your back leg lifts up into warrior three. Hands on your hips so you can feel level through your pelvis <laughs> and your back leg's extending a lot. You can put a little tiny bend in your knee if you really need it. Hold it there, five, four, three, two, and one. Begin to bend your left knee, push your right foot really, really far back. Remember, you've got to stay in extension here, so take care. And then as you extend back, you're in a lunge. Left knee is bent, right leg is straight. Mental check one more time. Check all their muscles are firing. Inhale, reach the arms up. We have five lunges that we're going to take here. Bend your back knee, keep your back in extension. Let it just graze the floor, push the floor away and lift the back knee up. Straighten your front knee second. Number two. And lift. Three. Four. And five. Awesomeness. Back into our high lunge, uh, i.e. bend your left leg, straighten your back leg. And this time we're going to do a twist. You're only going to go as far as you can until you feel your body's completely pain free and you're really comfortable. Left arm reaches back, right hand reaches forward, eyes look towards the back hand. Both hands lift up, Ooh, feel my left leg, and open into warrior two. Uh, flatten your back foot, bend your left knee, and go a little lower. Mm -hmm. Stretch out through your fingertips, engage that butt cheek, hold it here. Now flip your left palm, and again, we're going to go into our extension, our reverse warrior, but you are going to take your time, you're going to move slowly, you're going to listen to your body. Back we go. Beautiful. Bring your hands parallel to the floor. Hands are going to go in your hips as your hips turn to the front. Back knee is going to sink to the ground. You're working your back into extension and then you're using your core as you step your left leg to join your right leg. So if you want to make camel a little bit more juicy, you can point your toes. I mean, it's not that much different, but it's obviously a, a progression. So if you want to do this versus this, it's up to you. Hands are in your hips. Squeeze in. Lengthen your ribs far away from your pelvis and then start to arch back. And then bring yourself all the way up. So we're taking a lot longer with our reps now. Another thing I'm doing, which I really encourage you to do the same, when your hands are on your body, feel muscle activation right versus left. So for example, me right now, my right leg just wants to switch off, but my left leg is like, yeah, I can do it all. So you want to keep that balance. Number two, lift and lengthen your ribs far away from your pelvis, start to arch back and use your hands to really feel what's happening right versus left in my body. And then bring it all the way back up. One more, one more. Let's go. and then bring it all the way up. It makes such a difference when you engage your butt. Like it's so important, I can't stress that enough. Again, you're going to lift up and lean back. One hand at a time is going to meet your foot. Obviously, now that our feet's pointed, it's quite a lot lower, so be careful. <laughs> if it's really far, don't go this low. And then really extend. If it feels good, go for it. Uh. Put your hands on your hips, super strong core, lift yourself all the way back up. We're going to go into all fours, but to get there, we're going to stick our bum backwards. You're arching your back to bring you down. Your chest arrives 
closer to the floor so the hands can come to the ground. This time left leg is going to go first, right hand is going to lift up. This is just preparation people, we're going to do the harder one again. <laughs> Bring the hand and the knee down to the ground, touch at the same time, boom. Left hand, right leg, hold. Hand and knee arrive on the ground. Excellent. Little baby push-ups that are kind of easy and really simple. One, two, three, and four. Curl your toes, lift your knees off the ground, keep the arch in your lower back. Still squeeze your bum a bit though and round your upper back, i.e. push on the shoulder blades. Now we're going to do four with our knees off the floor. One, two, three, and four. And then place your knees back down on the ground. Just for a little breather, we're gonna do super plank. Curl the toes, lift the knees up. Left leg, right arm. Five, four, three, two, and one. Other side. Put the left hand and the right foot on the ground. Put your knees on the ground, but keep the arch in the lower back. At the moment, if you had to lift the left arm up, what you would find is that your right knee is right underneath your hip. So that's not wrong, but I want you to make it a bit harder by bringing the shoulders forward. So there's a diagonal line from my knee to my head. So you, you are still arching in your lower back, but your butt isn't really high. It's kind of pushing towards the ground. You're going to turn towards the left. You're going to push into the hand. Your lower back is still arching. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. I'm sorry, I keep repeating myself. Left arm goes up. Little juiciness now, um, which is optional. Bend your, your top leg, your left leg, so the foot goes behind you. Circle your left hand behind you and hold the foot, and then push the foot into the hand. So you're stretching out through the front of the left chest, the pectoral muscle. And hold it there, three. Now, if you're pushing back this way, it's gonna be a bit too easy. So if you want to make it harder, remember diagonal line from head through to knee. And then turn your eyes, that makes it hard as well. Okay, and then slowly come back, but really be careful here. Be careful, keep your butt up, up, up. Okay, other side. Instead of having your bum far back, bring the diagonal line from head to knee. Then as you shift, lifting the right arm up, you aren't pulling towards the back of the mat, your head is reaching towards the front. And even though you're moving this direction, all these muscles are very, very strong. Right arm high, lift the right foot up, bend the knee behind you, circle this right arm as far back as you can. If you hold the outside of the foot, you'll not really get a stretch. So look, I'm gonna turn my palm so that it faces the ceiling, and I'm gonna hold the uh, ankle, the inner ankle. <laughs> then I'm gonna push the inner ankle into my palm so I get a stretch on the right pectoral for five. And then slowly roll yourself all the way back. It's tough. To the front, bring your hips to the ground. And then don't fully put your chest down just yet. Just chill like halfway. You can just do like in a relaxing, relaxing position. Okay team, we have got still the core to go. I'm sorry. One more thing. Bring your elbows underneath your shoulders. And I want you to curl your toes underneath you. Squeeze your butt cheeks. And then you're going to lift your hips away from the ground. One. And down. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, oh yeah, eight, <laughs> all the way to ten, nine, and ten. Awesome team. We're going to roll onto our backs now. So if I had to just roll onto my back like this, obviously, my, I'm not really in a good position to talk to you guys. 
but you're fine. You don't need to worry about that. So just roll on your back because it's the safest way for you to get there without being in flexion. I'm going to spin around so I can see you. <laughs> you can see me. You're on your back. Your knees are bent. And you're going to squeeze your bum. And you're going to lift your bum away from the ground so that you're in glute bridge. And this is so good because this is a rehab exercise. It fires up your posterior chain. And again, it's a little mini back bend for those of you who find that the back bends are supporting your, your, your disc. Push into your hands and your feet, lift your butt up a little bit higher. And now I want you to imagine all your pelvic floor muscles are being pulled in and up towards your heart. If you want to make this a bit more challenging for balance, cross your hands across your chest, opposite shoulders. Bring your hips down and then squeeze your bum to lift your hips up. Down. And lift. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The last one, lift it up and hold there. Keep it still. Squeeze your bum. I never get tired of saying that. <laughs> Squeeze your bum and lift it up even higher. Great. Now very slowly bring your hips down. And yes, we are going to make this a little bit more intense now. If it's too intense, stay with both feet on the ground. Those of you who want to practice with just one foot on the ground, move your feet together first. So the soles of the feet... Um, the insides of the feet are touching. Lift your left leg up first, but as you do that, be careful that you don't round in your spine. Lift it up just so you can keep the lower back in an arch. Push into your right foot loads. If the hands are across the chest, it's a bit harder, so you can put your palms down if it's too much, and bring your hips down. One, lift, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ooh, change. <laughs> and again, ten on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. Bring your extended leg down to the ground. Put the soles of your feet together and let the knees relax wide. <laughs> okay. This position is obviously a great stretch and a really nice relaxation position, but we can also really push into the feet to lift our bums away from the ground, which is again a glute activation. Be careful with this one. If it feels too much, just stop. Palms definitely should be flat on the ground to help you. You're going to push into the ground to lift your bum up. And we're going to stay here for 10. Two, one. Bring your hips to the ground. Soles of the feet, flat knees up. We're nearly there, my friends. Cross, okay, so for, I actually was thinking about not including the next stretch in this class because there is this risk of flexion coming into your lower back. I'm going to just put it out there with a huge warning. Please, please, please be careful. We're gonna cross the right ankle over the left knee. And for some of you guys, if your hip is tight enough, you can just sit like this and wait. Your lower back, it might be a good idea to put something underneath your back, like a rolled up towel or a cushion to keep your extension. And then you're going to lift the left leg up until you feel a stretch on the right leg. And I'm going to interlace your fingers behind the left leg. Now what I'm doing, instead of pulling in like this, is I'm arching my lower back and then I'm pulling the femur in. So you can still feel a really good stretch on the right leg. It shouldn't be like, oh, you know, it's completely, uh, it's a complete loser stretch and I'm not getting anything. <laughs> it's actually really good. But... If you don't keep your back into extension, you're going to suffer for it later. So I have to stress this again and again. Keep your lower back arched. Pull that left thigh in. It's actually a really nice stretch. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, let's switch over to the side. Let's do last pose. Change left ankle, right thigh. Lift the right knee up. Interlace your fingers behind the leg. And hold. And then we're done. Yay. Soles of the feet flat. Legs are going to extend. And watch what I'm doing. I'm arching my lower back. I'm almost exaggerating it. I'm turning my palms to the ceiling. <sighs> Take a humongous breath in. And a big sigh. <sighs> For those of you who want to stay in Shavasana a bit longer, be my guest. Stay as long as you can. Thank you so much for practicing with me and thank you again to everybody who wrote to me on my previous herniated disc videos. You have inspired this class and if you can think of anything that you'd like to improve on in either your physicality or a pose or anything really, write to me in the comments box below. I read all my comments and it really does mean a lot to me to hear from you. Until next time my love, lots of kisses. I'll see you soon.